Okay, it's Mr. O'Mara here again. Once again, I'm joined by Claudia Schiffer. How are you, Claudia? I'm good, thank you, Mr. O'Mara. How are you? I'm very well. Who, who, we were going to put a picture of Claudia Schiffer, and if you don't know who Claudia Schiffer is, I have to say, as a as a male, I think you've missed out. Yeah, you need to Google it. Yeah, no, not in class time. No. <laughs> no, Google it in your own time. time. That's right. <laughs> no, we don't want to see people going and Googling Claudia <laughs> Schiffer. She's a model, for those of you who are wondering what we're talking about. But we don't have a picture of you. Who are you, really? I'm Miss Luckman. Fantastic. Let's get on to the work for today. Okay. So we've talked about product reviews. That's right. And interviews. Yes. And finally, I think we're actually probably onto the hardest one, which is the expository piece. Okay. You know what I think gets people about expository pieces? The name. Yes. It it's is not an everyday name. word, is that's, it? No, it's not. No. But that's a word they will hear more and more, especially as they're going higher up in, into the levels, into the higher year levels. Absolutely. A lot of your writing in senior school is expository. That's right, yep. yes. Expository is actually just a fancy word for explaining. It's an explaining text or an exploring text. That's right. And it explores um, people, uh, places, situations, really people's story. Yeah, absolutely. It's kind of a standard informational text, isn't it? That's right. So you could probably put structure of an information piece, but I guess everything's information, so that's why that's we right. use expository. It's a bit more pointed. Yep. So a good source of expository pieces is newspapers. That's right, yes. Luckily, like it used to be that there were three newspapers in Melbourne. You read the Herald, the Sun, the Sun or the Age, or, or the, the Australian, yep. but you had pretty much four places to go. Now you can read from wherever you want. It's all out there, isn't That's it? That's right. And the list I'm looking at there is quite long. It is. Much more than you would have had, say, 10 or 15 years ago. That's right. And now you can read them on, online as well. Yeah. You don't have to have a paper copy. Yeah, no, it's fantastic. So what we've got here is a number of places that you can go and find yourself an article. Mm -hmm. Now, I would say that the more confident readers are probably looking at something from the age. Yep. That's one of my favourites. The Geelong Addy tends to be a bit shorter because it's yep. more a local paper. Yep. So if you're not so confident or you're just really interested in local issues, I'd hit the Addy. That's right, yep. Uh, News.com is probably in between those two. Mm -hmm. So, you know, pretty standard reading. Yep. Um, Herald Sun, again, pretty standard reading. Yep. The Guardian's probably pitched a bit higher. A bit higher, that's right. Um, Slate is pitched much higher. Yeah. I actually think you want to be quite a sophisticated reader to try and tackle yes, those. Yes, I agree with that. I think for The Guardian, again, that's the UK version. Not quite as high as Slate, but strong-ish. And Google News, you're going to get a real mix. Yes, okay. So guide yourself towards a news story that's pitched at about your level. That's right, that's be good. So have a look around. And there's quite a choice there. So. Yeah, there's plenty of choice. Yeah. And if you've got another thing that you'd like to go and read, if you've got a favourite site, by all means, go yeah. and have a look. Yeah. So you grab yourself a piece, you paste it into your OneNote. Once again, we're on a treasure hunt, aren't we, Miss Luckman? We are. <laughs> what are we looking for? Gee, I'm overcome with excitement here. Well, there's, there's ten things there that we could be looking for by the looks of that. So Is a pineapple one of them? Probably not. No, okay. <laughs> well, that was a bit random, wasn't it? It was, but it okay. depends on the story. Oh, I'll actually tell you, I've been, um, getting people, I've been dropping random words into these <laughs> to give students something to look for. Yep. So, uh, we are recording. In fact, Miss Battilia, would you like to come and join yes, us? Yes, come Okay, Miss Battilia has just come into the room. We're talking about expository texts. <laughs> okay. So, you found yourself one in the newspaper and you've pasted it into your OneNote and we're going on a treasure hunt. Miss Batilli, you're going to have to speak up since you're not real close to the microphone. What am I doing once I've pasted it in there? So you're looking for features of the structure of a expository piece? Yeah. And you're highlighting them in the piece of writing as well as you're highlighting what features you've identified. Absolutely. So we're doing that to build up a kind of profile of what's going to go into it. So again, rather than just having a textbook telling you these are the ingredients, you're actually going to go out into the world and see what the standard elements are. Yeah. And by the way, don't just, this is a bit, I saw a few students fall into this trap, oh yeah, I'll just say it had everything. No, my students know that that's not the case. They know to highlight the main points, we're looking for certain things. Um, we're looking for people, we're looking for locations. Some people, I guess, are just guessing, thinking, oh, they've given us a complete list. I'll just claim yeah. I found everything. Yeah. Don't fall into that trap. Yeah, we'll know you didn't do the work because <laughs> no articles have all of them. That's right. Yeah, people in the real world don't write to strict recipes, but there are common elements. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, well, so that's what you're doing for this task and we'll let you get to it.